So we were always struggling with hydrologic time series predictions. Our models had lots of uncertainties with their structures and parameters, but over the last few years, our group and a few colleagues in the community have really promoted deep learning in hydrology. And from my vantage point, I see it evolving from a niche toy to a mainstream prediction tool going further. We have a group of highly enthusiastic graduate students and postdocs and visiting scholars looking at predictions of hydrologic variables such as soil moisture, stream flow, and other associated phenomena such as landslides, water temperature, and uh, dissolved oxygen. The deep learning is really a tool that we, our group, leverage to uh, make these predictions better at higher accuracy and lower cost. February 2020, Dr. Shen heard from a colleague that there were plagues of locusts in Eastern Africa, and Dr. Shen mobilized our group immediately, and within less than a month, we had a, a platform online and going. It was amazing to see everybody just jump straight in. Desert locust crisis across East Africa in 2020 represented a major threat to food security across the region. Now, one of the key characteristics of desert locusts is their need to lay eggs in sandy, moist soil. Dr. Shen and his group rallied to our cause early on in the crisis and developed a tool that was able to use deep learning and satellite inputs from NASA in order to help the United Nations tackle this critical problem. A really excellent use of deep learning and hydrological models. Traditionally, to flat forecasting, we need to do a lot of specific math to assimilate most recent observations to improve future forecasts. Uh, but our thought is, if deep learning has the capability of extracting patterns by itself, what if we dedicate that math to machines? We have built a stream flow forecast model using time series deep learning. This model can flexibly integrate different types of discharge observations with a generic form. The model is also very efficient. With only one hour training, it can give us very accurate predictions for more than 600 basins over the continental United States. In the future, we will expect our models to be able to assimilate more types of observations, especially like satellite observations. We will examine the complicated relationships of soil moisture, groundwater, and river discharge using these data-driven models. We think that machine learning is not just throwing data at an algorithm. It's much more than that. It's a new differentiable way of computing. It's a new way of asking questions. In the past, we've been putting our hypotheses in the models and see how they work together. In the big data era, we asked the question, what should have been our hypotheses? My role in the department is to explore different relationships along a river graph. I focus on what we call physical knowledge discovery networks. These networks take existing relationships and existing formulas that are created in literature and applying them along a graph network in order to discover new things along the river. Using this knowledge, we're gonna be able to infer different things that we may have not known about via traditional research methods and fieldwork. Our focus in the near future is to add different formulas to our physical knowledge discovery network so we can predict other things and learn more about other things besides for stream discharge and Manning's roughness. Globally, landslides kill thousands of people each year, cause billions of damages, and they really cause economic grief for, for these remote areas. DeepLTV is a project funded by Google.org through their AI Impacts Challenge program. Our primary mission is to build up the AI systems that identifies and catalog landslide events and utilize such data for evaluating the risks as well as attempt on the prediction of this hazard. Our project works in two phases. The first phase is called the detection phase, uh, which we are currently in. And the second phase is called the prediction phase. Right? We are moving towards that. So in the detection phase, we are trying to design a large-scale global landslide database which has diverse landslides around the globe. So given an image, the model is going to first say whether there is a landslide in it or not. And then if there is a landslide, then it's going to localize the landslide inside that image. This multifunctional interactive cloud-based DBMS tool is effective in providing a simple and user-friendly pipeline to manage large-scale global landslide databases. Interactive markers can be added deleted, or even updated, which is useful as new data arrives in temporal batches. It also has prediction abilities with deployed computer vision models to predict landslide events from satellite images. So after the deep learning model detecting the landslide inside of the map, 
and it will it will draw the yellow parts inside of the pictures for uh, annotators to easier for annotate those landslide images. If you hear this message, we really need your help. You can come to our website. You can help us curate the data. You can help us put more information in, and that will really help our cause. Right now, we are looking at 2D images, but we would also like to leverage the second derivative of slope and uh, so on and so forth, so that we can create a 3D model of landslide and actually get to know the process of how a landslide would happen. A nice thing about our system is that it's so bad already, but I believe we're still barely scratching the surface of what it can accomplish with it. And it's just amazing to see how energetic these young people can be when they know they have enhanced something that they can help other people with.